After building an international reputation for painting Sydney Harbour in the boldest and brightest of colours, Ken Doan has now drawn on dark days in Australia's past for his latest exhibition entitled Attack. To commemorate the 70th anniversary of the Japanese midget submarine attack on Sydney Harbour, the Mossman Art Gallery on the city's northern harbour shore has commissioned the celebrated artist to paint a series of works about this tumultuous event during the Second World War. The paintings have not only encouraged Doan to look at his beloved Sydney Harbour in a new light, they were also produced at a time when the artist was having to face his own battles. Scott Bevan has been invited to Ken Doan's studio for a preview of the paintings. I think it was surprised that they could get so close to us, they could get through our defences. If they could come into Sydney in the middle of the night, what else could they do? No one could believe that suddenly we were under, a, under attack. And um, it suddenly, I suppose, brought the war absolutely to our doorstep. Over the years, Ken Doan has earned acclaim and fame by painting the pleasures to be found on Sydney's harbour and beaches. But for his latest exhibition, Ken Doan has dived below the harbour's surface and into the depths of history. Look, it was really only when I started this project that I started to understand what an incredible piece of courage it was from the young Japanese and what an important part of Australian history it is. Sydney Harbour, Naval Depot and Vital Shipping Centre, chosen as the scene of Japan's daring assault on the night of May the 31st. In 1942, three Japanese midget submarines slunk into Sydney Harbour. Sydney was pretty well chockers with naval ships all over the place. And so the Japanese, two days beforehand, had set out a plane reconnaissance to see what was in. And the report had come back that there were a lot of naval ships there. So the decision was made to launch three midget submarines at Sydney Harbour. Ken Doan was just a year old when the attack happened. We lived in Belmore during the war. My father and my uncle and the rest of them were away overseas. But I had grandparents that lived in Ferry Bar, so we used to take the Manly Ferry across. And even say in 1944, there was still a kind of boom gate across the harbour, uh, from Middle Harbour across to Camp Cove, and the Manly Ferry had to slow down to go through. So as a little boy, I mean, I wasn't conscious that there'd been submarines in there, but there was something strange about the harbour. Now the man who lives and works by the harbour and is inspired by life around it has returned in paint to those days of war in 1942. So I started with pictures about the Japanese part of it. So for instance, if you look at a picture like this, which I think is about number three in the sequence, this is a, or, or based on an old traditional drawing called Farewell to the Ferryman of the beautiful girl waving goodbye to people. And she says sayonara. It's sayonara, yeah, it's sayonara, that's right. In his visual journey into the past, Doan takes the viewer into the ocean off Sydney as the Japanese mother submarines launch the midget subs. So if you take a picture like this, which is uh, the morning of when they first came into Sydney Harbour, they the three submarines were waiting outside. These clocks show the various times in which they set off. And I've, I've put the Japanese samurai masks in there to kind of make that link. And I've painted the water in a slightly Japanese manner because in a sense, that's what they, they wanted to do. They wanted to, to take over the harbour. They wanted to inflict pain and surprise. The first part of the attack was total confusion and panic. After that, it was shock that they dared to come so close, right into the harbour, in fact. Ken Doan has painted the confusion, even the messages being exchanged during the attack. And he's portrayed how one midget submarine became entangled in nets. The two crew members blew up their own sub, killing themselves. Another of the midget subs met a similar fate, being depth charged. But one sub inflicted a major blow, launching torpedoes at the visiting American cruiser, the USS Chicago, 
but instead sank a depot ship, HMAS Catapult. The midget sub then apparently escaped from the harbour. Many naval ratings aboard had weird experiences. Some were thrown out of windows and doors by the blast. Some were trapped in the sinking hull and only hauled out at the last minute. However, as Lindsay Shaw, a senior curator at the Australian National Maritime Museum, points out, the outcome was much worse than that. It was pretty bad. There were 21 men killed at that night. And they were asleep on the accommodation vessel, the Cuttable. It was a former ferry on Sydney Harbour, which had been turned into that purpose. It was moored off Garden Island. Uh, one of the midget submarines let go a torpedo at the Chicago and they, um, it, it managed to go underneath the cuttable, hit the seawall and exploded. It sent the cuttable up into the air and then back down again and the men died. It must be the most horrific thing. Suddenly, you, you know, you, you don't, you're blown up, you hear this noise and before you know it, you're under the, you're trapped under the water and you can't, you can't get out. <laughs> I never sat in the studio and thought, well, I'll, I'll do a painting about people drowning. So I had to find a way of what, what, that might, what that might feel like. While working out how to paint death, Ken Doan was confronting a reminder of his own mortality. He had just had surgery for prostate cancer. I, I'm 71. You know, basically, I think I'm 28, but I think I'm probably 71. So when you get prostate cancer, and a lot of men don't talk about it, and they certainly should, it does make you put some kinds of in, things into perspective and, and think about it. So I don't know, I'm not about to say, well, look, I have to finish this because, excuse me, I have to drop off the twig in half an hour. I mean, but I wanted to concentrate on this and I wanted to not worry about taking any risks. As you get older, I think, with painting, that, that's what you do. Every single painting that you do, you have to do it, you know, absolutely at the, the, the best of your ability and you don't, you know, pussyfoot around. And as Australia prepares to commemorate this 70th anniversary of the attack on Sydney Harbour, Ken Doan hopes his images will be seen by the Japanese as well. I didn't want to glorify war at all. Not at all. But I think both the Japanese and the Australians would have to admire the courage of these young guys and of this particular attack. And so enough time's gone past now to put it in perspective. Thanks, Scott Bevan. The exhibition of uh, Ken Doan's paintings entitled Attack opens at the Mossman Art Gallery next Saturday.